Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. Today we are going on a narrated road trip. I will be driving from Bukit Tengah on the Penang mainland to the Pulau Tikus Market on Penang Island. I know this appears to be a rather weird journey to make, but as it happens to be that I need to go from Bukit Tengah to Pulau Tikus Market, I thought it would be fun to do this video. Throughout the journey, I will explain to you the sights as they appear. Think of this as a virtual tour with me as your virtual tour guide. Before I go any further, let me first give you our starting point coordinates. Key these coordinates into your GPS, Google Maps or Waze if you ever want to do the same journey as I do over here and want to start where this video starts. I am driving along Jalan Bukit Tengah, which is Federal Route 1, heading west. I started the recording as I passed the St. Paul's Anglican Church. We are now at the Jalan Pengkalan traffic lights in Bukit Tengah. For the benefit of those who are not familiar with Penang mainland, Bukit Tengah is a place in Bukit Mertajam, which is one of the major townships in the city of Seberang Perai. The name Bukit Tengah refers to a small hill where the St. Paul's Anglican Church is located. Since the main road takes its name after the hill, the area served by the road is also called Bukit Tengah. As Federal Route 1, Jalan Bukit Tengah is part of the Old Trunk Road which connects Butterworth to Kuala Lumpur. Once a narrow two-lane road, it has expanded in width as well as traffic volume. Located on the western part of Bukit Murtajam, Bukit Tengah began to urbanize in the 70s, becoming an area for small industries. Gentrification only arrives in the past few years as new high-rise condos were built here. We are now approaching the Bukit Murtajam roundabout. This is, if I'm not mistaken, the largest roundabout on the Penang mainland. It was built not only to accommodate the increase in traffic volume, but also to provide great separation between the railway line and the roadway. Gone are the days when cars had to stop for the trains to pass through. Now the trains go under the flyover, hardly noticed at all. The interchange at the Bukit Murtajam roundabout is where four major places meet. To the north is Permatang Pau, to the south Bukit Tengah, to the east Bukit Murtajam proper, while to the west Prai. Beside the roundabout and away from our view is the Bukit Tengah railway station. It's the final stop for some trains before Butterworth. Coming down the flyover, we enter Jalan Baru, which means New Road. The road is new only by name. Why then is it called Jalan Baru? Because it was the extension of Jalan Besar, the main road of Perai. With that said, the moment you hit Jalan Baru, you are in Perai. You have left Bukit Murtajam behind. But it's only in theory. The truth is that the demarcation between Perai and Bukit Murtajam is not clear. Where we are right now, some consider Perai and some Bukit Murtajam. The mosque we just passed on our right has its address in Perai, but a short distance down this road to the left is Maidin Bukit Murtajam. So we can say that there is no universal agreement where Bukit Murtajam ends and Perai begins. And if that's not enough, Prai and Seberang Prai mean different things. Prai is the name of the town, while Seberang Prai is the name of the whole area that constitutes Penang mainland. Jalan Baru is the main road in Prai. If you take it the whole way, you will arrive in Butterworth. But we are not going there today. Today we are taking the Penang Bridge to go to Penang Island. Take a good look at this road now and compare it to the roads of Penang Island afterwards. You will find the mainland to be wider and more spacious. In comparison, roads on Penang Island tend to be very compact. Until recently, the mainland has an industrial feel to it. Any heavy industry for Penang is sent over to the mainland. The mainland was where people go to work, while the island was where they called home. It's only in the last two decades that scarcity of land on the island forced the development of large-scale residential housing on the mainland. We are approaching the Purai Interchange now. We will exit Jalan Baru here to enter the North-South Expressway.
This stretch of the North-South Expressway is perpendicular to Jalan Baru. Its construction has spurred the development of Perai, especially with the founding of the Sebrang Jaya Township. We are now on the North-South Expressway heading south. This is an area of industrial parks. There are lots of factories here, but they are different from the ones in Bailer Pass on the island. Coming up next is the Jalan Perusahaan Interchange. This is where we exit the North-South Expressway to enter the Penang Bridge. To reach Penang Island, Follow the signage for Georgetown. In the past, the signage said Pulau Pinang instead of Georgetown, which caused a lot of confusion since Penang mainland is also Pulau Pinang. Fortunately, the authorities wise up and updated the signage. We are now approaching the Toh Plaza for the Penang Bridge. From the time the bridge opened until today, traffic has increased so much that they also have to expand the Toh Plaza. Still, the jam can get horrendous during rush hour on some days. But it's smooth travel right now as we are off the rush hour period. As a Penang Knight, I enjoy discounted fare for using the bridge. You need a Penang address to apply for the reduction. We have just entered the bridge. Almost immediately, we can see Penang Island. I will sit back and let you enjoy the journey and I will be back in a short while.
For those unfamiliar with the Penang Bridge, the bridge is 8.4 kilometers across the water and 13.5 kilometers if you include the access roads. The bridge opened to traffic on 14 September 1985. It is a cable state bridge with four pillars at the main span where it has a clearance of 33 meters over the water. We are now approaching the main span, which is high enough for small vessels to pass under, but larger ships and cruise liners have to go around Penang Island to reach the harbour. So that was one of the trade-offs in the construction of the bridge. Of course they could have made the main span even taller still, but the cost was prohibitive. Once we pass the main span, Penang Island appears to unfold before us. We are heading towards Kalugal. Batu Uban is on the left while the light waterfront is on the right. The condominium on the left is called The View. Built in the year 2007, it is the first building in Penang with a sky bridge. We will be reaching Penang Island in a short while. We are now on Penang Island. The area that the bridge is now passing through was reclaimed for the bridge construction. We are now on the Tun Dr. Lim Chong Yu Expressway. The light waterfront development is on the right. This is a massive residential and commercial development. So far, the first phase is completed. 
The second, called the Light City, is now under construction. In front of us is Bukit Tunku Kudin, named after the Kedah aristocrat who had his bungalow on the hill. In a future video, I will take you to have a look at the ruins of the bungalow. The area at the foot of the hill has been developed with high-rise condos and also a lotus hypermarket. We are exiting the expressway now to Jalan Tunku Kudin. To our left is Bukit Tunku Kudin, while to our right is Bukit Dumbar. We are approaching the Galuga Interchange. Here, we take the underpass which connects Jalan Tunku Kudin to Jalan Masjid Negeri. This is the one and only underpass on Penang Island. We are now on Jalan Masjid Negeri, also known as Green Lane. It used to be a small country lane passing through an area of plantation land called Batu Lancang. As Batu Lancang made way for development, the area is erased from maps, leaving only remnants in road names such as Batu Lancang Road and Batu Lancang Lane. Then Batu Lancang Road was renamed Jalan Tan Sri Te Yu Lim, leaving Lorong Batu Lancang as the sole reminder of the former area name. Today, this residential area is commonly known as Green Lane. The road Jalan Masjid Negeri is one of the major roads in Georgetown. As with all the major roads on Penang Island, it gets quite congested, especially during rush hour. If you compare Jalan Masjid Negeri on Penang Island with Jalan Baru in Perai, you will notice that over on the island, even the major roads are quite narrow. It's something that islanders have come to accept that on Penang Island, everything is on a smaller scale. Roads are narrower, shopping malls are compact rather than spread out. On the other hand, the roads on Penang Island are likely to be lined with trees, something which we enjoy very much. That is one of the major difference between Penang Island and Penang Mainland. Although there are some roads on Penang Mainland that are lined with trees, they just don't look as nice as those on Penang Island. I am not sure why. Maybe it's the choice of trees? Or more likely, the neighbourhoods on Penang Island are neater. As I mentioned earlier, you don't find some of the industries on Penang Mainland over here on Penang Island. Maybe the authorities are more selective of what you are allowed to build on Penang Island. The result is quite noticeable, even for people like me who have spent all his life in Penang. If Penang were to be compared to a house, Penang Island is the front yard while Penang Mainland the backyard. You will keep the front yard tidy to impress visitors while you leave your junk all over the backyard. It's no wonder that most visitors to Penang do not venture to the Penang mainland, the usual reason being there's nothing to see. My desire is that the authorities would develop Penang mainland to be on par with the island. 
I'm not talking about building bigger malls over there, rather I'm talking about the need factor. Right now, the main draw for people to buy properties on the mainland is that they are bigger and cheaper. We are now approaching the Autopon Bridge, a vehicular flyover providing true traffic flow from Jalan Masjid Negeri to Jalan Tan Sri Te Ulim. This narrow flyover shows that if there is a will, you can add a flyover even at this narrow spot. Within the neighbourhood on the left is the Cathedral of the Holy Spirit, the main Catholic cathedral in Penang. While on the right is Wat Bin Bang On, a Thai temple and Buddhist meditation centre. The Catholics made education a centre point of their local outreach, and so in many places in Penang, where there is a Catholic church, there would be a school founded by them nearby. In the case of Green Lane, that would be the Convent Green Lane School on the right side of the road. It is today a national primary and secondary school. We are now approaching the Batu Lanchang flyover which connects Batu Lanchang Lane with Hamilton Road. Hamilton Road was named after the headmaster of Penang Free School from 1925 to 1926. The Penang Free School, founded in 1816, is the oldest English language school in Southeast Asia. Although the school was established by Reverend Hutchins of the Anglican Church, it was created to provide circular education. Originally established at Farquhar Street, it relocated to Green Lane in January 1925 and Hamilton was the headmaster. Back then, Green Lane was still rural countryside, but the population was already starting to move out of Georgetown and into the suburbs. Over the subsequent decades, the plantation land in this area gave way to government quarters which still exist today on the left side of the road. On the right side of Green Lane, new roads were laid and named after headmasters of the Penang Free School. In addition to Hamilton Road, they include Hagris Road and Pinghon Road. The school celebrated its 200th anniversary of its founding in 2016 and come 2025, it would have been in Green Lane for a hundred years. During that time, it has seen Green Lane transform from a country lane where the only traffic being an occasional bullock cart to one of the major thoroughfares on Penang Island. While the Batu Lanchang flyover has helped to take some traffic load off the street, Congestion is still a daily occurrence on Green Lane. We are finally moving again. On the left, you can see some government bungalows. On the right are the junctions to Pinhon Road and Hagris Road. These roads serve a quiet, upscale neighbourhood. The Penang Free School itself is coming up on the right and just before the school is the road named after it, Free School Road. You will notice that there are trees on the road divider. Originally, these were trees planted on the roadside. The people of Penang are very particular about chopping down trees. To widen the road while minimizing the chopping of trees, the authorities had to leave these trees in the middle of the road. The shade they offer keeps the road cool, but it comes with a high maintenance cost to ensure that the trees are free of disease and that their branches don't come crashing on cars during storms. We have reached the Green Lane Scotland Road interchange. It has the oldest flyover on Penang Island. The flyover replaces a roundabout that was here before. Do you know, originally, Green Lane does not meet Scotland Road at a junction? Road improvement works realign the junctions of Green Lane and Scotland Road so that they are across each other. This is for Green Lane and Scotland Road to function as a sort of western ring road to Georgetown. Remnants of the original junctions of Green Lane and Scotland Road are still visible today if you ever care to look for them. The original junction of Scotland Road is across Jalan Ayu Itam from the Penang State Mosque. As for the original junction of Green Lane, well, we know it today as Jalan Han Chiang. We are now caught in a traffic congestion atop the Green Lane Scotland Road flyover. This is a daily occurrence. It's not really a jam, but rather a traffic queue caused by the Batu Gantong York Road traffic lights. Just as with the Batu Lancha flyover, every time we need to come to a stop, it's because the lights are red. Running perpendicular to this flyover is Jalan Ayitam, the road that leads to its namesake on the central part of Penang Island. We will do a future video where we will drive along Jalan Ayitam. 
My plan is to show you everything about Penang and explain it all to you as though you are right here with me. If you enjoy our journey so far, please take a moment to give this video a like and share it. Also, subscribe to this channel so that I can bring you more videos like this one. There are so many other roads and places I want to show you, but every video takes time to research and produce. Nevertheless, it's well worth the effort if you enjoy discovering with me. We have come down the Green Lane Scotland Road flyover. A short distance on, we will cross Sungai Ayer Itam. At road level, many may not notice it unless they look for it. Rivers on this side of Penang Island flow from west to east to discharge into the South Channel. It is my belief that Captain Francis Light followed the course of Sungai Ayetang to a spot not far from here where he had the land cleared to create a pepper plantation. The plantation is long gone, but on that land is today a well-preserved bungalow which we know as Suffolk House. I can't say for sure that Captain Francis Light came up Sungai Ayerutan by boat since the river seems too shallow for that. Was it deeper in the past or did he walk along the bank to reach this spot? Or did they create a path that became Jalan Ayerutan? These are all possibilities. As for Suffolk House, did Francis Light build it himself or did he build a different, more modest version of it? There are no definite answers but just strong arguments for or against it. So, this road is known as Scotland Road. Branching off from it is York Road. Both were named after places in the United Kingdom, one a country, the other a city. Not sure why such names were chosen. Was it arbitrarily? Well, if you do know why, please share your knowledge in the comment section. We never stop learning. On the right side of the road is a Hindu temple called Bhagawan Sri Ramakrishna. It is part of Ramakrishna Ashrama, an Indian orphanage. There is also an Indian primary school on site. This complex dates back to 1938. On the left side of the road is the new Penang Sharia Court complex. We are nearing the intersection of Scotland Road with Jalan Batu Gantung and York Road. Jalan Batu Gantung leads to a major Chinese funerary complex and cemetery. There is a funeral parlour and on-site columbarium. Jalan Batu Gantung also leads to the Penang Turf Club. Founded in 1864, this horse racing club is the oldest of three such clubs in Malaysia. The Turf Club originally occupied the grounds of McAllister Road where the St. George's Girls' School is located. It moved to the present site of Scotland Road in 1939. Making a right turn at this junction takes us to York Road. York Road is best known as the road behind the Governor's Mansion. On our left is the Penang Turf Club. Next to it is Brook Road, which leads to the upscale neighbourhood of Jasselton Heights. We are approaching the junction of Western Road, now renamed Jalan Utama. Western Road used to be the western boundary of the city of Georgetown. 
However, since 10th May 2015, the entire Penang Island has been given city status. And so, the city status of Georgetown is no longer in effect. We are now on Western Road. On our right is the Penang Sports Club. The club was originally known as the Penang Cricket Club and used to have its original clubhouse at the Esplanade. It moved to this present site in 1939, the same year the Penang Turf Club moved to Scotland Road. Now we will make a right turn to McAllister Road. It is one of the five major roads that radiate out of Georgetown like the fingers of an open palm. From north to south, the five roads are Northern Road, Burma Road, McAllister Road, Dato Kramat Road and Jelotong Road. So, McAllister Road is like the middle finger of Georgetown. It was named after Colonel Norman McAllister, who served as the governor of Penang from 1807 to 1811. During the 19th century, much of this area was used by the military, which explains the name of two roads branching from McAllister Road, Sepoy Lines Road on the right and Cantonment Road on the left. We've just turned left to Cantonment Road. Apart from the road name, there is no trace of the military on this road anymore. Cantonment Road is today a leafy road lined with large mansions. In Penang's early history, this area was plantation land, the location of the Ayaraja estate owned by David Brown, Penang's largest landowner. Cantonment Road leads to Pulau Tikus, the suburb on the northern part of Georgetown. This narrated tour will also come to an end when we reach the Politicus Market, which is where I am going today. Our journey has taken a good 35 minutes from Penang mainland to Penang Island. We cover a total distance of 25 kilometers. We are now in Politicus. The name Politicus means Mouse Island. It was given by early Eurasian settlers because their boat arrived next to the island of Politicus. They got to shore and made their way down the coast until they arrived here where they settled. And although the Eurasians form only a minute fraction of Penang's population today, the name they gave to this place has remained since. We are turning right here and the Politicus market is on the left side of the road. And so my dear friend, our journey has come to an end. Thank you for joining me the whole way. Again, if you enjoy such narrated tours, please give this video a like and share it. That would help the YouTube algorithm. And subscribe to my channel for more videos as I take you to discover food and places. See you again soon.